UFO landing site sits Orford Ness Lighthouse. Skeptics claim that its 3,000 watt beam of light is what the servicemen mistook for the UFO. It's sort of like a pupil of an eye looking at you and winking. And the flash is so great it, uh, it almost burns your eye. If we don't believe they were looking at the lighthouse, then we have to believe that they were watching a UFO which was pulsing at the same interval as the lighthouse and was, you know, less bright than the lighthouse. And yet on Colonel Holt's tape, he makes no mention of it. Now, Vincent also said that the duration of the strobe on the lighthouse was every five seconds, and it seemed to coincide with you making entries on your tape recorder every five seconds. Is that a coincidence? Let me show you something. I have the tape recorder here with me. It's a small linear. The tapes are 20 minutes in duration. So there's no way I could have kept the tape running the whole time. I must have stopped that tape a hundred times. And it's very simple to do. If you look, there's just a simple slide switch. I wow. was going click, 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 click the whole time we were out there because I didn't want to run out of tape. Oh, there it is. Hey, I see it too. What is it? We don't know, sir. Yeah, it's a strange, small red light. Looks like uh, maybe a quarter to half hour, maybe further out. Six weeks later, Thurkettle inspected the three indentations the UFO supposedly made in the field. So I'm going through the woods now, hearts going, really excited, and then we got to an area where there was a ring of sticks over a glade in the sort of bracken, this brown dead stuff around us, and um, he said, this is it. And as I looked at it, and I said, but these, are, these are rabbit scrapes. Now, Vincent also had something to say about the indentations in the ground. He's of the opinion that they were rabbit scrapings. Keep in mind, a day or two after the incident, someone in the security police squad, and I'm sure, went out there and created at least one, if not two, false sites, and they put a lot of sticks in the ground around it. Why would someone do that? Uh, to mislead people, perhaps? I don't know. So maybe Vincent was looking at the wrong site. I don't know what he looked at, but he said it was six weeks later when he went out. Why would someone like Vincent, basically someone who wasn't there, get so much credence for his theories? You know, it's not uncommon for black programs, as I like to call them, to use disinformation as a very efficient tool and a very good way to discredit a story. Just days before any reports went to the U.S. Air Force about the event at Bent Waters, British intelligence agents show up and start interviewing people. What were they doing? The British must have known, at some level of the government, what was going on and what they had to do to cover this up. At first I thought, okay, maybe it could have been a lighthouse, but I'm really starting to believe that Colonel Hall did have a huge experience. Conflicting testimony from highly credible witnesses have kept the debate about the lighthouse theory alive for more than 27 years. But can the testimony stand up to the scrutiny of scientific proof? I'm looking forward to getting more detail of where his position was, the position of this UFO, where it landed, and the position and orientation of the farmhouse. The most widely accepted explanation is that the lighthouse emitted a beam of light that reflected off the farmhouse and created the mysterious light the soldiers saw. The team decides to test this theory. Well, I thought what we want to do is get the best coordinates we can. I know it's been 27 years, but we'll just do the best we can. So Jeff and I will stay out here with the GPS, and if you two can go back to the site where you thought you were that night, and, and, and then adjust our positions based on your sight lines from that location. Using the GPS coordinates of the main landmarks, the team will construct a 3D model of the event. Now, is this the kind of where they were? Actually, a little more to the right. Ted, a little bit this way. Further forward. Okay. That's good. As best I can determine. Make a waypoint. Ted marks the GPS coordinates of where Colonel Halt said the UFO landed. That's good. Colonel Halt points out the location of the lighthouse. Right? There's a notch in the far tree line over there. It was about 30 degrees from where the, I saw the object to where the lighthouse was. That was my recollection. Okay, so if Jeff is the light source, is that good? Yeah. Take a waypoint! Okay, Ted, come on back here. We'll plug the GPS into the camera and we'll shoot from this waypoint. Was the object witnessed by more than 80 Air Force servicemen and the deputy base commander merely a beam of light? a UFO, 
or something else entirely. Is it possible that the beam from that light was what the troops in the forest saw? Science may hold the answer. And a new expert witness, never before interviewed, speaks out. The lighthouse is actually... Experiments producer John Tyndall has created a model of Rendlesham Forest to determine what the military officers witnessed. Was it a beam of light or a UFO? Well, remember we were in Rendlesham Forest in England. We took GPS coordinates and photographs as well. Mm -hmm. This was the, the view from where Colonel Halt was, was standing that night. And with that and the photographs, we've been able to recreate to scale exactly what was happening there. And we, what we want to do is, is prove and or disprove two different points. The first point is, can a, a lighthouse six miles in the distance have any sort of effect on, on the face of that farmhouse? Second, can the UFO have an effect on the face of that building? What the colonel was saying was he was actually seeing reflections coming back from the windows. Mm -hmm. So in that miniature, we put some uh, little dental mirrors in there, actually, to, uh, to uh, aid us in, in doing the reflection. Never before has somebody actually geometrically set up the angles of sight between the lighthouse, the farmhouse, the clearing, and the forest. So where was Colonel Holt's line of sight now? Right over here. So this is the position where he was standing, mm -hmm. and uh, we've set this up as a line of sight so we can get the exact angle to the lighthouse or the windows in the house. I see it. Uh, Jeff, why don't you bring the uh, magic UFO wand in, and we're going to approximate it in that area. That position where Jeff has that light is where Colonel Halt said this UFO had landed. I can see the reflection in the window from his point of view, and what's interesting is that the lighthouse is a separate light entirely, not reflecting in the window. Because there is no reflection from the lighthouse to this, into this line of sight. You see the light directly, but you don't see any reflection. But I don't understand how the lighthouse even plays into this. No, uh, that's, that's a very good point. The, the lighthouse is almost over the horizon, and it's just, it's just a very strange idea that experienced servicemen would get excited about a lighthouse in the distance. There it is again. There's a strange red light. There's definitely something there, some kind of phenomenon. The second experiment was where must there have been a light source in order to create a reflection off the windows of the house and into Colonel Holt's eyes? I'm seeing a reflection on a window from uh, the object that's supposed to be the UFO. So a bright light reflecting off the UFO from that position would definitely make the house look that it was on fire, as if it were on fire right, that's behind what it, yes. the window. It's sort of like a pupil of an eye looking at you, winking. And the flash is so bright it, uh, it almost burns your eye. I think it's safe to say that if there was a very bright light in the position that Colonel Halt observed there to be, the angle of reflection off of the house is just about optimal off those windows to get the brightest reflection back to the observation. I think basically we've just closed the door about Orford Ness being the source of the light that Charles Holt saw that night, whether it's a UFO, whether it's not a UFO, who knows what it is. One person may be able to provide a definitive answer to this UFO debate. Keith Seaman is the keeper of the Orford Ness Lighthouse. Is it possible that the beam from that light was what the troops in the forest saw that night on December 26, 1980? If we look at the lighthouse behind us, we can see that it's got a big piece of metal behind it, pointing in the direction of Rendlesham, which is over there. Now, albeit that the intensity of the light was greater then, in 1980, than it is now, the light still wouldn't have shone actually directly through the trees. All you would see on a clear night is the flash of the lighthouse every five seconds going across the sky. So you're saying that that cover, that piece of metal that is blocking the light was there in 1980? It's always been there. So there's never been a time in the history of this lighthouse that the light was actually shining towards Reynolds right. Forest? No. 
I think we finally got a whole new piece to the puzzle. According to Keith Siemens, the lighthouse attendant, there's a big piece of metal on the back side of the lighthouse that doesn't shine towards the land. It shines out to sea. So this is like a huge, exciting new piece of information that, that no one's really ever looked into. And thankfully, we actually came here to get the information to find out for ourselves. We interviewed Charles Holt and confirmed the entire story that Colonel Holt said. We actually...